Hey, Star Wars fans, welcome to the latest episode of the Star Wars Fanpedia Community Showcase. I'm Brandon Ray, the founder of Fanpedia, and with me, as always, is Fanpedia admin Brian Linder. And today, we're also welcoming back Eric Morrow, the director of entertainment programming at Wikia. Thanks for being here, both of you. Uh, so Thanks let's just me. get yeah. So let's just get right into the big news. Uh, Lucasfilm announced just a couple hours ago that J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasdan, uh, and Lawrence Kasdan, I'm sure Star Wars fans know was the co-writer on The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. They are both taking over the Episode 7 screenwriting duties, so Michael Arndt, who had been the screenwriter, is presumably not anymore. Um, that's really all we know at this point, but I want to start with you, Eric. Uh, what do you make of all this so far? Well, it's funny because uh, Linda and I were just chatting about it a little bit ago, right? And... Uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to take away from what you're gonna have to say, Linder. But you know, you were theorizing: is this kind of their attempt to um, de Lucas Lucify Lucasify? <laughs> okay. Uh, what this new trilogy, uh, the way that this new trilogy had originally been planned, or uh, or is it the opposite? Are they, you know, because you know, there's there's you know talks. Uh, you had pointed out the Jet Lucas uh, interview where he was saying. That JJ was talking to his dad a lot more and, and whatnot. So are they trying to bring more of his influence into the mix? I don't know. Um, you know, uh, I want. I would like to say that this sort of thing happens all the time, but you know, this close to when the production is supposed to start, um, it is a little. It is a little bit unnerving. Um, but you know, the fact that JJ is going to get in and start writing writing a little bit himself. I'm surprised that he didn't do that from the get-go. That's something that you do always see in these things. When whenever they bring in a, a director, especially a director of the caliber of J.J. Abrams, they typically play a pretty big part in reworking a script if it's already um, you know been established when they come in. You know, Joss Whedon, perfect example. He did that with uh, Avengers. You know, there was a script already. He came in. He pretty much rewrote the whole thing. So. Um, Honestly, I'm surprised that this sort of thing didn't happen sooner. It's interesting. The point you made, Eric, about it being a little bit unnerving this close to the you know supposed production start time, which I guess now they're saying is confirmed for spring 2014, so we're looking at, what, March? Probably for a, a filming date. Presumably day. around that. Rumors had been we'd see a, a start in January, I guess. Um, hmm. But now, yeah, I guess you know spring, more like March. Um I do think it's unnerving a little bit. I think you're already seeing these kind of doom and gloom uh, tweets and stories popping up on news sites now um, this afternoon. This is um, Thursday afternoon when we're filming this. And it's almost... Um, I, I kind of wonder if Lucasfilm... Um, their, their statement is... Um, I think a, a nice statement about Arndt's departure from the project. They don't really mention. They don't frame it in a way, you know, where it's presented as him leaving the project. Um, I think Kathleen Kennedy mentions, in fact, that um, he's sort of positioned the story in a way that they feel like it's in a good place now. Um, but then you have other outlets that are jumping on this, and um, specifically one uh, badass digest that we wanted to bring up. Um, those guys are, are saying that this has sort of been in the offing since July when we saw the rumors about Abrams potentially leaving the project. I don't know if you guys remember that. Mm -hmm. um, some drama around, I think mainly at the time, there was talk about him not liking the shooting location and the schedule, um, you know, going to England and not being in L.A. Um, but, uh, you know, now I guess the, the, what's, the other shoe that's dropping is maybe there were troubles... Uh, with the script, maybe he didn't like what he saw. Maybe um, he wanted to go back and rework it. So now maybe that's what we're seeing. Yeah, and to the point about uh, de-Lucasifying it, I guess we'll call it, um, that same Badass Digest report said that Abrams wasn't happy with the script that Michael Arndt was working on. And presumably, so far as we know, the script that Arndt was working on was based on the treatment that George Lucas wrote for Episode 7, because we know that when Disney bought Lucasfilm, they also bought outlines for Episode 7, 8, and 9. So 
I won, and this report is also saying that they're not just going back to the drawing board on this script. They're reworking the entire arc of the trilogy. So you do have to wonder, are they stepping away from Lucas's visions? Is there some sort of conflict there? Because that, I mean, given, I, I don't want to sound like too much of a Lucas basher, but given the negative reaction in a lot of circles to the prequel trilogy, I think there's probably a lot of recognition that they don't want to go down that road again, that, you know, maybe Lucas doesn't have the best outline for the movies. Mm. Well, you know, I mean, let's not forget, he also did the original trilogy, right, which is what, what pulled us in, in, in right. into this, this world of fandom, right? So, uh, you know, I, I, if anything, you know, uh, if anything, I, I could see it just being J.J. wanting to put his own unique spin uh, on this kind of universe, and, 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 and now is the time, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know... If you're going to make that statement, if you're going to change things, do it now, do it with the first one, and set the course and set the tone for not only the new trilogy, right, but we're looking at potential spinoff films, too. So what he's going to do now is really going to kind of set the tone and pave the way for all of the new Star Wars coming out of um, the Disney purchase. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned how the original trilogy was what brought us all in, and you know, the the difference between the two trilogies, to me, um, just in terms of how they were made, was, you know, the prequels, it was all Lucas all the time. He had every hat on. He made all the decisions. That wasn't true in the original trilogy. He had a lot of good influence from a lot of other people, and one of them was Lawrence Kasdan. You know, he mostly wrote The Empire Strikes Back by himself, and he worked with Lucas on Return of the Jedi. So... You know, there is a nervousness involved in this kind of change, but at the same time, bringing in Lawrence Kasdan also makes me very confident about what the future holds for this trilogy. Mm -hmm. And Eric, you mentioned, um, you mentioned spinoff films. I just wanted to throw in, to the point that um, wasn't it in February, like Kasdan was originally hired specifically for, um, you know, consulting on the, the trilogy, the new the tr sequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, he was brought on, I think, specifically for a spinoff film, right? He and... and um, Kinberg, right? So, I mean, Kinberg. Yeah, Kinberg at the same time. So, yep. yeah, it's interesting that his role has blossomed in this way. And you have to wonder, because, you know, one of the big questions about the sequel trilogy is how much it's going to be connected to the originals. You know, are Han, Luke, and Leia going to be in it? Are they going to be main characters? Are they going to be supporting characters? I could be totally reading something into this that's not there, but bringing in Lawrence Kasdan, somebody who's written those characters, written their stories twice before, that seems to be a good indication that there's probably going to be a fair amount of those characters in these movies. Yeah, and you know, I, I will say this too, you know, kind of going coming full circle now and, and to, the, to the statement I made at the beginning about, you know, this change happening kind of so late in the game being a little bit unnerving. I should also note, though, that this is Lucasfilm we're talking about, right? So I guarantee you that while we haven't heard any casting news yet, you know, they've gone out, and they've got, they've got at least... If, if Han, Luke, and Leia are going to be in it, they've, they've got those guys, those actors locked. They've got those mm -hmm. guys signed. They've probably right. been talking to you know, actors for the new roles already, because that stuff's probably not going to change from the script too much. Um, and then aside from that, you know, you know that they've been developing uh, the look of the ships and the look of the universe, and they've been looking at probably um, VFX uh, footage that they've been playing with. And so all of that stuff is probably all ready to go so that, yeah. you know, when they do kind of lock this down and once they do, I, I don't know, I think come the new year, if that spring start date is legit, come the new year, 2014, we're going to probably start to see some announcements rolling pretty quickly and some pieces falling into place really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, when you – I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to jump in and say, you know, my you don't I know you don't agree with this Brandon, but my whole one of my whole things about this is I think they've already got at least like I would say an eighth, if not even more of the movie done in the computer already. Like I'm not saying there are finished shots yet, but I think, you know, some of that stuff is is completed. 
Oh yeah, there's previs all over the place. I guarantee yeah. you. Yeah, yeah and, Lu and Lucasfilm did say today in the same announcement that location scouting, production design, casting, and costume design are already underway for Episode Seven. And my counterpoint to yours about a lot of the movie being done, at least you know, I'm sure there's a lot of pre-visualization that's happened already. But in terms of stuff that's done, done, like ready to be on the movie screen, um, that yeah. that was the George Lucas way. I mean, he he would have locations and um, sets and whatever already being built and then he'd say, oh my god, I have to go write this script now. Um, I don't, that's probably not the J.J. Abrams way, so I don't know. There's a, that could go either way for me. Abrams does seem like the kind of filmmaker just from the commentaries on the discs that I've, I've watched. Um, he seems like he's the kind of person who gets on set and, and will let things kind of evolve mm -hmm. organically there. Um, so maybe now that he's actually started to kind of plot this thing out and take a close look at it, um, he's realized that there needs to be some changes. So maybe that's what we're seeing. Yeah, at the very least, we know that he's got a library of lens flares already created. That is so true. Is <laughs> what a lens flare from a TIE fighter looks like. This is one from the Millennium <laughs> I don't think so, dude. I'm going to go on the record right now and say there will be no lens flares in the new films. That's my prediction. I'm going to go on the record and say you're wrong. Oh, hold me to it. <laughs> I will wear a Jar Jar mask on this video if, we, <laughs> yeah, if, if I'm wrong. Nice. <laughs> but, yeah, um, you know, when, when, Eric, you mentioned that this is Lucasfilm we're talking about, so, you know, they're doing it a certain way. And it wouldn't surprise me, too. Like, when we, when we hear that a movie's being rewritten, in general, that's a bad sign, usually. Um, it means that there's problems and they have to figure them out. Or it's perceived as that, anyway. Right? Yeah, it's perceived as that. It's also something to think about that Lucasfilm, even though it's part of Disney now, now that it's a major Hollywood studio system, it's virtually its entire history never has been. The rules don't always apply to them, so this could be totally something completely innocent. I mean, we, we have no idea. Yeah, totally. And, and, you know, I will say this, too, man. Um, just the whole idea, the whole uh, concept, the whole principle of filmmaking has really, really changed from, you know, back in the day when, let, let's say, like when Lawrence Kansden was, was doing Empire Strikes Back to, to today. And you've got movies. Uh, man, Marvel is notorious for this, for example. Marvel Studios. How many people have had a hand in scripting, you know, the, the script for the Avengers or for Captain America or for Thor? Mm -hmm. And and how far into the production is that thing being rewritten? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I remember that happening in the Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, man. That thing, so many different people were involved in writing those scripts and they would actually start shooting and the script wasn't even done yet. They were still reworking and still reworking it. So, you know, the whole idea, the whole way you make films today has kind of changed. So, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they're still working it on the script in some form well into the, you know, when production starts. Yeah, I agree with that. I wonder, um, I wonder if this means the rumors about the December 2015 re release are more likely. What do you think? I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I think we all three of us agreed, right, uh, that 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 their original release date just sounded a little too implausible. Mm -hmm. If they were going to start shooting in January, I could see May or June happening. But if they're not going to start shooting until March, because they're saying spring now, I just don't see how they make a Star Wars movie in 14 months. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would be willing to put money on that December date. I really am. Nice. I, I really would. Yeah, and, you know, speaking of dates, I want to throw this out there. Um, there's a theory going around, because I don't know, I know, Brian, we've talked about this. I don't know if you've noticed it, Eric, but there's a theory that's going around that because starting a couple weeks ago, every week on Wednesday, uh, Lucasfilm on their YouTube account has released one of the vintage trailers from the original trilogy. Two weeks ago it was A New Hope, last week it was Empire, yesterday it was the Revenge of the Jedi teaser trailer. 
next Wednesday is the first anniversary, October 30th, of the Lucasfilm deal. So there's a lot of talk that, um, you know, maybe something's going to come out of that, maybe a casting announcement or something. Um, would you think it's possible, because, you know, we were talking about how this has been brewing maybe since July, this, this whole script issue. So maybe the reason that they waited to announce it until now is because they were hoping that if there's an announcement next week, this gets drowned out by all the good news. I don't know. Do you think there's something to that? Wow. Well, uh, you know, it's a total shot in the dark. But yeah, I'll just say this, and then and Linda, I'll, I'll let you chime in. I've been really disappointed with um, the missed opportunities on the Disney slash Lucasfilm side of things. I mean, there was, uh, you know, May the fourth. They had a huge opportunity to make some sort of an announcement, right? A, a casting announcement, a title, something. Nothing. Everybody thought something was going to happen that day, right? They had that <laughs> countdown clock on StarWars.com. Remember, we all thought something big was happening. That's right. Uh, then they had Star Wars Celebration Europe. What was the big announcement out of that? Oh, that Star Wars Celebration is happening in Anaheim in 2015. Wow. That, okay, I guess that's big, but again... A title, a casting announcement, something. They so did have know, John Williams out of that one, though. I'll give him that. Well, were you really surprised about that? I mean, come well, on. That's, that, that is true. <laughs> give me something maybe, that we, we didn't know. Maybe this is why. Maybe there, maybe there was some degree of turmoil, um, you know, going on behind the scenes, and maybe that's why we didn't see anything concrete develop over the summer. Especially yeah. once you get to, to Comic-Con and um, Celebration Europe and Disney D23, that's all around the same point that the stories about Abrams maybe leaving ended up breaking. So That's right, it was July. Everything there. I mean, I hope you're right, Brandon. That would be awesome if they did something that, uh, next week. And if they continued along the lines of this kind of release, this, this trailer release theme... Think about it, dude. I mean, obviously, they haven't started shooting, so they don't have a trailer for this movie. But we've seen it in the past, actually. I'm, I'm, and I'm racking my brain now because I'm on the spot, so I can't think of the exact movie. But I know that I've seen a trailer for a film that was literally just an announce of the title and, and had no no film footage whatsoever. Right. Um, they Empire did that. Do. There was an yeah. Empire preview. It was, yeah. it was uh, Ralph McQuarrie concept art, and they said what the title was. Exactly. And, and then, like... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, like, we've been speculating earlier in this conversation that there's, we know that there's some sort of VFX of, that are already done. They could just, literally, the title and the Millennium Falcon exploding through it, you know, flying <laughs> towards the camera with a kick-ass lens flare. What? And then, bam, <laughs> that's it. There you go, I would, 2015. I would go to the theater around the clock just to watch the film that that was in front of. Because there was, <laughs> there was a rumor... Um, it was around the same... It was like the day before New York Comic Con started. There was a rumor that there was going to be some sort of announcement trailer, like a title announcement or something, towards the end of the month, and that Mark Hamill would be in it. So it could be something like what you just said, like they, it's just like a long time ago, or return to a galaxy far, far away or something, and he just turns around, looks at the camera, and that's it. I mean... That's sweet. That's, that's killer. I love that, that idea. Yeah. It would say absolutely nothing for the most part, but the exactly. internet would go insane. Oh, and you know what? The recent one, it just hit me. The recent one I was thinking was Avengers 2, Rise of Ultron. Uh, they kind of had that teaser that they mm. showed at Comic-Con, and it's online now, and it's it's literally just the helmet and the yeah. title. That's it. You know? mm -hmm. I'd take that. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I will say, though, is that I have been wrong every single time. So <laughs> I yeah. could... Statistically, I'm going to be wrong again, but we'll that's, see. I think J.J. Abrams' goal in life is to make you be wrong every time. He's like, stalking me. It's, it's yeah. kind of weird. That's what's happening. I think <laughs> all of fandom, that's probably his goal. Um, do you want to mention, I guess, the other thing that we found out today, um, a behind-the-scenes sort of crew thing that we hadn't heard yet, was that Ben Burt mm. is going to be back now, the sound designer who's worked on the prequels and um, the original... Now he's going to be back. He's confirmed for the for the new films, which is not a surprise, but it's still I'm glad to hear it. 
Yeah, I mean, this this whole announcement was like a, just a huge info dump of names. Mm-hmm. Lots, lots we could expect, like Roger Goyette, Matthew Woods, um, Ben Burt, and then a whole bunch of other people who I've never heard of who've worked with J.J. Abrams before. So we are definitely starting to hear some more. The um, One of the other interesting things, you know, you're talking about the list of names that they, they kind of dumped at the end of their statement. Um, two people that we don't see in there are the production designers um, mm-hmm. that were previously announced. Um, Ian McCaig and Doug Chang, who yep. worked on the prequels, um, had been announced for Episode 7. They're not mentioned in this, and we see two other guys. Um, Rick Carter, who worked on Lincoln, Avatar. Um, he worked on Forrest Gump. And uh, a guy named Darren Guilford, who did Tron... Um, Legacy? Tron Legacy? Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. And um, also Oblivion, which I loved the, the art for that, if you've seen any of it online. Um, so, yeah, anyway, um, I think that bodes well. I'm a fan of, of McCaig and Chang, um, but I want this to not look like the prequels. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm just glad to see that there's, like, fresh concepts being put out there. I'd love to get a peek at one of those guys' portfolios for this thing. Like, yeah, well, I mean, the look is probably going to match closer. Well, I mean, I guess we'll find out, right? We still don't know how how far after um, Return of the Jedi this film is set. But, you know, it's definitely going to be, I think, more reminiscent of the original trilogy, right, with, with kind of a, um, a new spin to it, I guess, because it's... You know, if it's set 20 years, 30 years later, they can they can play with the the look of things and and advance them a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Brandon yeah. wants it to all look like Naboo. That's what what did you say? Wants. I want it to look all like yeah, Naboo. Yeah, I did. I did say that. Yeah, I did like Naboo, but I definitely do want to go back to the design. So the original. Just go to France or Italy. But, yeah, or <laughs> Italy. Italy. Um, I, at the same time, though they are sort of boxed in a little bit with some of the prequel designs because you have to imagine if they're going to do anything with a government, hopefully not like political speeches or anything again, but if they want to do anything with a new republic or whatever, that would probably be on Coruscant. So those kinds of designs, those will still be there. Maybe they can tweak it a little bit, but for the most part, that prequel influence will kind of have to be there. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm not too concerned of that. I, I, I just want to see cooler ships, you know. New, new, mm-hmm. I, I, hopefully this thing is space-bound and it's not, it's not too, uh, too, too dependent on being set in Coruscant, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to go back to Tatooine, to be honest with you. Really? I know, I know that's blasphem, blasphemous to say, but I don't want to go back. It's tainted for you. I don't know. I could stand that. I just... Um... I do want to see cooler ships, and I want to see this. I want to see space battles along the lines of the original film, mm-hmm. like yeah. you know, A New Hope. So hopefully we'll see I wanna, that. I want to go back to Yavin. Well, we probably will, right? In right. in the EU, isn't that uh, right? Yavin was the location of the of the new Jedi Order, so it's possible. Take me there. I want to go to there. <laughs> so, sounds like we've probably run out of things to talk about then. Um, <laughs> tons, uh, Nothing else. We can check Twitter. Can... Check our Twitter feed. Um, I'll check <laughs> Twitter real quick. I don't. Did I bring this up before? Um, let, let me throw. Yeah, I did. Let me throw this out there and see what you think about this. With with Kasdan and Abrams now writing the the movie, I saw somebody on the the Force.net message boards mention this. Um, they said that Kasdan is someone who understands Star Wars because he helped define what Star Wars is, and Abrams is a total Star Wars fanboy who has a lot of love and respect for Star Wars. So do you think that's a good balance to have in the writing team? Linda, I'll take it. let you feel that one. Yeah, I do. I think that... Um, I think Abrams... He probably has, a, you know, as good of an understanding of Star Wars as he needs to to do this. I mean, he's he's as big of a fan as as, as us, right? Like, you know, and I would film it. I would I would 
direct the thing. Um, but Kazdan, you know, obviously has done that. He's worked with Lucas. Um, he knows the universe. I think he probably knows the, the intricacies of the universe. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's a good balance to have someone that's enthusiastic and someone who's sort of a proven um, person. And that's probably why they're, they're doing it like this, you know? Mm -hmm. So that you can sort of feel safe in that, knowing that it's in good hands. The guy who co-wrote Empire and Jedi um, is there, and then you have someone who's fresh and new um, and a hot filmmaker working on it also. And I think the pairing of those things is, you know, you can't hate on that, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, I feel I feel comfortable in that. Like, Kazdan is going to get kind of the the story down, right, and the the characters and that sort of thing. And then what Abrams is going to bring is is the respect to those to that story and those characters, and make sure that it doesn't go into you know territory that as we've seen, Star Wars just doesn't really work in or belong in, like, you know, a romance story or a political kind of, you know, mm -hmm. debates in the Senate kind of thing, you know, that, or the goofy, goofy humor. I mean, definitely the, you want humor in, in Star Wars, but not, you know, all like Jar Jar Banks and that sort of thing. Oh, Sorry, good. Linder. That's all um, right. And, I mean, look, I mean, I've said it a million times, the Star Wars, or the, excuse me, the Star Trek reboots, so Star Trek and Star Star Trek Into Darkness, those are Star Wars films. Those aren't Star Trek movies. Those are Star Wars movies. And I think a lot of Star Trek fans would agree with you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> they would, and not be too happy about it, probably. <laughs> no, definitely not. Well, I think that about does it. I checked the Twitter feed, and there doesn't seem to be any other news, so unless you guys have anything else to add... But you should follow I, us. You should follow us on Twitter at you should. We, Star we are Wars at, Fan Wiki. Yep. So definitely follow us, and we'll continue posting all of the latest news that comes out from Episode Seven. So thank you, Brian, for being here as always. Thank you, Eric, for being here again. And everybody, have a good night. Later, Bye, guys.